Do you recognize this word? Rehab. That is what most people associate with recovery from injury. Because injuries will and can happen, especially in the martial arts, due to the highly chaotic and violent nature of what we're doing. Now, rehab is really good, and it's something you should do after you've had an injury. But it's not the only thing. And if the only thing you know is rehabilitation of an injury, then your sense of injury management is not complete and your recovery time will be way longer if you only do rehab. Now, obviously you should know how to do rehab and you can definitely Google a lot of videos for how to rehab specific locations of the body. Let's say you sprain an ankle or you hurt your elbow or your knee. Then there are tons of rehab exercises you can find on YouTube or on anywhere on the internet basically. But I recommend you find a healthcare professional like a physiotherapist or even a personal trainer. However, I don't want to talk too much about rehab because it's such a, a well-covered area already. Let's talk about something else, which I believe is way more important to make that recovery time shorter so you can get back into training if you've injured yourself or somebody else, maybe a student or a friend, because hey, shit happens, it's martial arts. First, prehab. Prehab has to come before rehab. Prehab, as the name implies, simply means that you try to do similar exercises to as if you would be rehabbing. However, you do them before you even have an injury because you want to prevent the possibility of even getting an injury. And the exercises could be basically the same. So I want you to imagine that you already have an injury. Where would that injury be in your body? Maybe it would be your hips. Are they weak? Ask yourself. Maybe it would be your shoulders. Maybe your shoulders have a tendency of popping. And if you fall badly, you could definitely dislocate it. Or maybe the knee. I don't know. It's up to you. Now, why don't you start doing exercises to strengthen the ligaments and the musculature surrounding that joint before an accident or injury even happens? Maybe it will never happen, but who knows? So. That's the first concept that I want you to dig deeper into. Start doing easy, basic prehab exercises using basically the same stuff that you would do for rehab. You can find tons of those exercises for free on, on the internet, on YouTube, in books, anywhere. Or just ask a personal trainer. But don't wait until you get an injury. Start doing them now and incorporate them into your regular warm-up routine. Just take 10 minutes before every karate class and do some prehab just to maintain your own body and make sure that you, well, you won't become bulletproof, but at least you can help reduce the chances of injury or the risk of injury to be correct. Now, that was the first concept that I want you to look into. The next is what to do right here, right now, if you actually get an injury. Now. Let's say this is step one, prehab. Step two would be the injury phase, and step three is the rehab. Now we're on step two, right? What used to be the commonly known thing here was something known as the RICE protocol. R-I-C-E. Not the type of rice that you eat, but rest. Ice, compression, elevation. Rice is just a simple way to remember these different steps and not necessarily in this order. Now, ever since, since the rice protocol or the rice concept was invented or discovered, sports science has come further. Today, rice is not really the accepted thing anymore. Now, there is a P in front of the rice. The next step is price. Price stands for pressure because people started realizing that it's really important to apply pressure to the injured area immediately as you get the injury. So pressure, rest, ice, compression, elevation was the big thing for a couple of years. But now the latest thing when it comes to injury management is not even price anymore because sports science has really progressed. Let me tell you what the main current knowledge tells us. And I need some more space for this. 
Forget rice, forget price, here's what you need to know. Call the police. P stands for pressure. O L, which used to be the R, which used to be rest, has now been replaced by optimal loading. So there should not be a dot here because those two are together. Pressure, optimal loading, ice, compression, elevation. These are the important points that you need to keep in mind if anybody gets an injury, whether it's yourself or somebody close to you or around you, that you can help. So let's quickly break them down. And you don't need to become a healthcare professional. You're a karate nerd, but you just need to know the basics so you can take care of yourself or someone else. So, very quickly, here's the basics. Number one, pressure. Pressure is what you immediately apply to the area that is affected. And this is actually something that is already natural in you due to evolution. For example, if you hit your elbow and it hurts, what is your natural instinct? To do this, of course, to protect and apply pressure. Because the P also stands for protect. That is the first thing you need to do. Or let's say I hit my toe on a table. What's the first thing I would do? I would start jumping and holding my foot, right? It's a natural reflexive instinct to apply pressure and protect the injured area. And this is because that pressure will reduce the swelling. And you really need to push hard. For example, if a, if a soccer team or a football team has practice, and somebody falls down and hurts their leg, the whole team should rush over and just apply pressure as fast as possible. Speed is of the essence here. So when you or somebody else in your dojo maybe has an injury, apply pressure to protect and to help keep the swelling down as fast and as hard as possible. That's the first thing you should do, pressure that will greatly reduce the length of the recovery process because the swelling almost doesn't even have a chance to happen if you keep that pressure on. Just your hands is enough or just some sports tape or something like that. Maybe some compression garment, okay? Pressure slash protect. Number two is the OL, the optimal loading, which used to be known as rest. And the reason it's not rest anymore is because rest is not the best thing. As soon as the swelling is reduced, you need to start moving that part of the body that was injured. Now it might hurt a little bit and it might be stiff and that's natural and expected. But unless you start moving it around and it could be without any load or weight. For example, let's say I, I hurt my foot, okay? now. Maybe it hurts too much to walk around, but at least I could lie in my bed, look up to the ceiling, and do some basic motions with my foot. And then we can gradually reintroduce loading by actually walking around using my weight and then moving it through different position and positions and mobilizing it in different uh, angles and directions. But the point is, don't rest your injury because that doesn't give your body the stimulus to recover it faster. We wanna basically tell the body that this part of my body, or you tell the brain that this part of my body needs to be used again. It is not supposed to be inactive. Try to activate the injured area as fast as possible, as soon as you can after the injury, once the swelling has reduced and once there is not too much pain, okay? Don't be afraid of moving it as much and as actively as you can and as soon as you can. Three, pressure, protect. Optimal load, ice. The I stands for ice. Now, ice is something that is 
perhaps the least well understood of these things because there's a lot of debate in the sports science community as to how effective it actually is. Some people even think that it could make the injury worse. But one thing that's for sure is that it reduces pain. Meaning, if you feel pain or if you are in pain, use ice, okay? But don't apply it directly to the skin because you could get frostburn. So have a, like a, a towel, a wet towel between the eyes and your skin. In general, if you feel pain and if there is a swelling so that you can't move the limb, then sure, add some ice, but try to keep it 20 to 30 minutes maximum. So not longer than that. And then only use it for the first 24 to maximum 72 hours, not longer than that. And remember to keep something between the eyes and your skin. So basically 20 to 30, minutes uh, every two hours every two hours for the first one or two days after that it will not really have a, a, an effect anymore and it could even be negative according to some people next oh and by the way that ice it could actually be like these ice sprays or a gel it doesn't have to be actual ice from your freezer just so you know but it's good to have eyes in the dojo, like frozen peas, for example. Next, pressure, protect, optimal load, ice compression, C. Compression. And this is really important. Compression, you can keep compressing the affected area even for days after the injury. These other things are, are pretty much, for example, the pressure and protect, those are pretty immediate. But compression, you can keep compressing for days after you have the injury, even longer, especially if you want to stabilize the joints using some kind of compression sleeve or compression socks, or just a, an elastic wrap that you put around the affected part of your body that is injured. So for this, let's say I have injured my elbow and I have a, a compression band. What I would do is you start distal so you start away the part of the limb that is most away from your heart you start adding the compression band and you overlap 50 percent with each uh, circle with each wrap and then you keep wrapping both under and above the affected area really important don't just wrap on the injured part but above and, and under as well and it should be medium to strong. You don't want to kill all of the blood flow <clears throat> because then you will need to release it and wrap it again over and over again. And that's a pretty boring process. So try to just wrap it once. Don't do it too tight, but not too loose either because then will not have an effect, right? You want to keep that swelling down. So for this, I recommend an elastic band. Elastic band but you could use some kind of sports tape as well depends on what you have access to or elastic garments like compression sleeves and shirts and those but make sure they have the right amount of compression because many of these compression shorts for example and stuff is not real compression it's just marketing they need to have a lot of pressure pressure is the important part uh, for them to actually be true compression garments or 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 uh, socks or whatever you buy okay and then lastly compression elevation now just because it's last doesn't mean it's least important they're not really in the right order okay elevation simply means that the part that is injured should be kept above your heart level the higher the better so let's say I injured my foot. That could be difficult because I need to be walking around. But even if you could just lie down when you're checking your phone or when you're watching TV or something like that, when you're doing desktop work, just put your foot on the table, whatever you need to do. This will have such a great impact on managing your injury that even if it's such a difficult part of your body like the foot, try to elevate it above your heart level. Just lie down on the sofa. You can elevate it at the same time as you're putting on eyes, for example, or as you're working the compression. 
Try to combine the elevation with these other parts of the police protocol to make it even more effective. And definitely, in the very beginning, when you're putting on the pressure to protect the injured area, start elevating immediately. If I hurt my hand, I, or let's say I, I, I hurt my finger, I would apply pressure. I would keep it high for as long as possible until my arms get weak. And then I would try to lay down and put it on, let's say, a stack of books or, or pillows or something like that to make it more comfortable. Elevation, super important. Don't forget it just because it's the last one. And that's it. Now you know a little bit more about not just rehab, but also prehab and the police protocol. For whenever, if an injury actually happens, you will be more equipped to handle it now. Train hard, good luck, and stay safe.